Over 10 days in October, the Heartland Film Festival will feature 10 world premieres and more than 100 other independent films. One of them is called State of the Unity, and there's an Indiana connection. It's about a cross-country journey by the popular music duo, the Bergamots. The group is comprised of a husband and wife who hail from South Bend. They hopped into an old Volvo station wagon with less than $1,000 in their bank account, and they did so with the hopes of uniting people all across this country. This film is a documentary of their whole experience, what a wild ride they had. I recently talked with them at the Pop Machine Studio here in Indianapolis, where they talked about how this whole Unity Collective Car journey started, what they learned, and what's next. Here's the very inspirational Nathaniel and Jillian. I wanna be young again, cause I I'm Jillian Spies and I am a full-time musician. We tour all over the world in our band, The Bergamot, and we met in high school at Marion in Mishawaka, Indiana, when I was 15 and Nathaniel was 17, and we got married in 2013 in South Bend, Indiana. And I'm Nathaniel Hoff, uh, born in Michigan City, raised in South Bend, Indiana, a uh, full-time musician, uh, self-made filmmaker mm -hmm. uh, inadvertently through the process of growing up in the arts and uh, been playing singer-songwriter, producer, performer, and met Jillian in South Bend and we wrote our first song together in South Bend, Indiana, uh, Mishawaka, Indiana at a place called Marion High School and then we came down and performed it at the University of Indianapolis when we were 15 and 17 and that began our journey in the music and arts world and, uh, and brought us to where we are today. Now what was the name of that song, how did it go? Oh yeah, okay, so the song was called Seasons Change and it was all about how you can fall in love with someone through all these seasons that are happening and how even though you're growing, your love keeps you together and so through the changes the love is like the glue so it was i think it was kind of deep for like 15 and 17 yeah. you know we were hanging out a lot we were falling in love at a we, we say that we're uh, we are sweethearts from the heartland so it's kind of cool that we're now musicians and filmmakers and that we are actually our film state of the unity is in heartland international film festival we're like joking about how we're like oh we're sweethearts from the heartland and this is actually like heartland yes <laughs> Well, did you ever think that, you know, you were going to be filmmakers? I mean, you know, 15, oh 17, we're writing songs together, and the next thing you know, I mean, no. evolution. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that, well, life in the arts, you never quite know where the wind's going to blow you. And so we began as songwriters, singer-songwriters, performing, writing together, moved to New York City. And then when we were in New York City, we were touring a lot, playing a lot of colleges on the East Coast, and, and we felt that there was like something going on that we wanted to document, not only in our careers, but in the world, and we felt like there was this change happening. So we wanted to, I don't know, we just kind of like turned on a camera and thought, how hard can this be? And, uh, oh my. And that began an eight-month journey of filming, six and a half years of editing, where we learned it is actually extremely difficult, and there's a lot of things you have to learn. And so, but we never thought in the beginning that it was going to be what it is, but that's the beauty of art, is that sometimes it can take on a life that you never would have expected. And that's what surely what this film has done. Uh, take me back to how this all started. You were in New York. Mm -hmm. This is the pandemic. There's no booking. Yes. There's no performing. No venues. Oh, actually, we're gonna go. We're gonna go we'll back, back a step that. further. Yeah. So okay. the crazy thing about our journey with our film, State of the Unity, is it started. The idea came in 2015. Yeah. So the idea came. We were living in New York. We had just moved there. His grandfather had passed away, well, was on the verge of passing away, so we got in our station wagon, drove from New York to South Bend, said our final goodbyes, and then he passed away. And the night he passed away, we were, went to dinner, and then he, we got in our station wagon, and he put his hands on the wheel of the station wagon, and it was like the divine came and spoke to him and said, you need to go on a tour to unite people and you need to go now. And it was this really powerful moment where I had full body chills when he told me. It just felt very prolific on the path that we were going as a country. We could start, we started feeling on our 2015 tour that there was some sort of resistance, there was some sort of divide happening, couldn't quite put our finger on it in America. And so when this divine idea struck in October of 2015, and God was like, you need to go now, we literally, 
did a Kickstarter, and within a month and a half, we were hitting the road. It was the wildest thing we ever have done in our lives, and we just started filming 2016, eight months straight, 270 concerts, 50,000 miles. We, <laughs> we did crazy stuff. And there were moments where we were like, oh, we're definitely gonna die right now. You know, tornadoes, um, we slept in our car. There were moments where we had a really scary SUV pull up behind us in the middle of the night and just kind of stay on the back of our bumper and like, oh, they're gonna try and take all of our stuff, you know? So we were out there spreading a message of unity through the power of music, community, and collaboration, inviting everyone to sign their message of unity on our station wagon. And this message moved forward city to city, state to state during one of the most divisive election periods in American history in 2016. So we were out there as a, you know, we said that we were a, the counter narrative of 2016. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to kind of touch on what she said that uh, in 2015 we felt like we had to go right away. We did get this download of like, we're making music, we need to go on this tour, we need to bring people together. And we had all of maybe $600 in our bank account, a car with 264,000 miles on it. And we're like, this is... It's gonna be interesting. Bo I remember calling a guy who was helping like manage our day to day and I was like, hey, I think this is what we need to do and film it. And he's like, this is crazy. But I think that what you're on to, I mean, if you can pull it off and you guys can do this, and then it just was literally the filming of it began, and it, which was you fall into the arms of others. I mean, you're putting it out there to your fans. You're saying, hey, this is what we want to do. And all of a sudden, people would come out of the woodworks and say, I want to support this. I want to help you get to the next city. I want to, and the whole journey from beginning in 2015 all the way up to today has been a story of human empathy, concern, perseverance, and supporting each other. And one of the things I want to say tied into the pandemic, when the pandemic happened, we were four years into editing the film, and we had pitched it to a guy who couldn't work with us because his schedule was too full. The pandemic happened, our schedules completely opened up. We lost everything that we had in 2020, every gig, every opportunity. We were supposed to open for One Republic. That all kind of just fell to the wayside. So we pitched it again to our friend and said, hey, is there any possibility we could work on this? And he was like, it's amazing you emailed me today because literally my schedule has just fallen apart. And we began a two and a half year journey with him that took the film to its ultimate resolution. So we had lost everything, but in losing everything, we gained the one thing that we really needed, which was the completion of this film. And then it began the journey that ultimately led us here to the Heartland International Film Festival. But all through its kind of weaving and divine, you know, things happening and people stepping out of the woodworks all the way up until today, it's a story that brings people together and ultimately we wouldn't be here without the support of the community around us. Yeah. Uh, why is sometimes the message of unity such a controversial... Uh, <laughs> why is unity a conflict? Yeah. So that's something that we talk about a lot on the road in the sense that we are very tribal. So as people in the world, we have our tribes, right? You stick close to your tribe and you don't, you don't go too far away from that. But... Uh, oftentimes people can profit on the division. So there's a lot of times when different channels, different media channels can profit on dividing people apart because people tune in, keep tuning in in a specific way and it creates kind of this division. Oh, it's us against them. But the truth is we're all Americans. So the thing that actually unites us is the fact that we all are Americans. We all have basic things that we all want. We want to feel love. We want to be able to give love. We want our families to be safe. We want, you know, the next generation to be better and have a beautiful life. You know, there's things that we share, but we're also focused on things that are separating us when there's so many things that we share. So what we talk about is what we focus on grows and in spreading this message of unity and saying, hey, we might disagree on things, but that doesn't mean I have to hate you. I'm coming at this with love and open heart. If we can learn to love ourselves, we can learn to love other people. And it really starts with love and then it gives itself away. And I think that one of the things that I've come to understand with unity is that, you know, it's a, are we a diverse country? Yes. Are we a divided country? Yes. Do we have a lot of differences between us in many ways? Yes. But the diversity is actually what can what can actually push us forward. And the way I compare it is if you're building a home, right? You can sit around and debate the architecture and the color of the curtains and how we should do this and how we should do that. But when storms happen, if you're not doing any work together to protect yourself, 
you're left vulnerable because you have no home. But when you bring people together and you say, hey, you know what, we're gonna lay this concrete, you have these skills, and oh, we need to put up these posts, you have these skills, all of a sudden you realize that this diversity of talent, this diversity of, of understanding is what actually makes for a great team. And when you're working together, it becomes less important about the divisiveness and the differences, and now you're thinking about what can actually bring us together? Well, it's working together for a common cause, and that's been the root of our country, it's the foundation of our country, but we have to return to that and this understanding that, yes, we have, we have differences, we have things that divide us, but let's not focus on that right mm -hmm. now. Let's focus on building a better future so that when storms come, when the rains come, we have a place of shelter where we can all take refuge in together. And I think that that diversity can actually be something that pushes us forward and actually makes us stronger as a country. But we have to look at it first and say, how do we come together to for a common cause? And a lot of times it's bringing together through uh, you know, music. a common, yeah. yeah, something to work forward together with. Tell me, what do you hope people see in your film? You know, if you can give a synopsis of it. Yes, so I hope people see a, a couple who is putting everything out on the line, fighting for unity, and bringing a message of hope through the power of music and celebrating community because unity is community. That's the thing that I really learned out on the tour is when you have a strong community, right, that sticks up for each other and they're there for each other, you have unity and there is strength and power in that and there is hope in that for a better future. So when people watch the film, I hope they laugh, I hope they cry, I hope they, they feel positive at the end, I hope that it gives them just a little bit of hope going forward and maybe a new perspective on what unity is, a shared future together and how we can actually get there. And I hope that people, when they watch the film, they're just seeing two Hoosiers who felt inspired to go into the country and tell a narrative that wasn't being told by the media, that was being told by everyday people, that was being told by people. You know, I was born in Michigan City. I grew up around a lot of steel workers and people, you know, in, in South Bend and on the South Side. It was like, we just wanted to take this message. What did I know about unity? Nothing. What did, what did I invested my life into the betterment of this country? Nothing. So it was a journey to try and educate ourselves on what people's stories are and let them tell their stories and not let us be the interference of that. And I hope that people, when they walk away from it, they think that, you know, here's two people who had little to nothing going into this journey, but it was the journey that changed them. It was the stories of the people along the way who helped us, who supported us in times of, you know, where we wanted to give up. I mean, this, this six and a half year journey at any point, you're just like, forget this project, you know? Um, but then that's when people would step in and say, you can't forget this project. This project is meant this much to me. And that mm -hmm. would just be like, oh, you know, all right, fine. Like, you we'll know, you made a great more point. Day. <laughs> like, we'll give it one more shot. And so I think that when people watch the film and they walk away from it, they can see that, you know, this is a story about bringing people together. I think that as a Hoosier, we understand that we're from the Midwest. It's like we are, uh, you know, a lot of times the grease in the wheel. And I think that um, when you see it at the Heartland International Film Festival, that's a festival that also stands for the same things that we stand for. So you're seeing a film that's aligning with the message of the festival. And I think that it's really important in these times to find those alliances and stand strong together and say, we can have a better future. Why? Because we need to inspire children. We need to inspire mm -hmm. our kids that there is a better world out there, but we have to continue to strive for it. What happened to the car? So we auctioned the Unity car off and it went to one of our biggest fans and it's been in Hazel, North Carolina for the last, oh my goodness, six years. And uh, we have some exciting things about the car that we're gonna be announcing at the Heartland International Film Festival. So when people come to see State of the Unity on Friday, October 7th, it's gonna be a full experience. You're gonna see the documentary, you're going to see us perform, we're gonna have a live Q&A, plus we have a couple things up our sleeves as well. <laughs> And the auctioning of the car, um, we were actually able to raise awareness and money for a children's hospital called uh, Beacons Children's Hospital in South Bend, Indiana to benefit a music therapist there. So that was our whole mission was to bring about awareness throughout all 50 state journey, having people sign the car and then taking this piece of art, which at that time was, you know, the car was basically worth less at 264,000 <laughs> miles. Uh, I think a guy offered me like 500 bucks for parts. Uh, we turned that into an artwork that we were able to bring about awareness and auction off for the Children's Hospital to benefit a music therapist where, you know, it's a really important part of the journey because music is part of healing. It is part of the yeah. process of growing. Whether you're in surgery or you're coming out of a divisive election, it's a way to heal people and we thought that would be a great way to give back. And how much money did you raise? 
We raised, I think it was like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars in cash, which was, you know, for us that was coming from where we were and the journey that we were on was a really good amount. But the thing that we always say is that the amount of awareness that was brought, we had people that had donated to the hospital on our behalf. And so we were really, it was a journey of what the car was able to get in the end, but it was also a big awareness that we were able to bring, to, like I said, with the housing thing, it's like you bring people together for a common cause and all of a sudden you see people aligning from different walks of life. And that was a big part of that journey was bringing awareness for a cause like music therapy that we believe is really important to the well-being of the people who will benefit from it. So you're musicians, but then you ended up learning all about cameras? Yeah. <laughs> did you start shooting it, or how did yeah. that work out? So for the first two weeks of it, we actually brought an indie-based cinematographer, Leah Trebet, on. And thank God, because we were like, whoa, what are we doing? And, and she actually got footage of both of us. That was a big thing on the tour, was how do you get two people when... I was filming the majority, and so Leah filmed the first two weeks, and then I had to literally just jump in. He literally drove us to all 50 states, and I filmed, and I was on the computer nonstop making phone calls, booking, figuring out where we were going to spend the night, where we were going to do our laundry, where we were going to eat, and it was crazy. And so as I'm learning, and I'm filming, and I'm getting more comfortable behind and in front of the camera, because then we'd set it up, and we'd have to do, hey, we're here, you know, everybody... Um, it was just such a, a growing experience for me as an artist because it was like, oh, yeah, I'm a musician. I can sing. I can dance on stage. And then it was like, oh, whoa, I'm now a cinematographer. I'm an editor, filmmaker. He's editing. We're learning how to do this. We're directing. We're producing. We're, you know, we're, we, we're filmmakers now. And so it's like six and a half years later, as long as it would take to become a doctor, we, we spent to become filmmakers. And so yeah, and we're... Yeah, I mean, we're very blessed because the film took off at the Sedona International Film Festival this year where we won the Excellence in Filmmaking Award. And then a couple weeks later, it won the Best Feature Documentary at the Paris Independent Film Festival and on and on. So, And all along, like you said, filmmakers, musicians, all along that last part of the journey, we were I was working on I'm writing a new record that is called Far Out that's releasing at the end of the month. And then we're opening for the Bare Naked Ladies playing that album. So that's a huge, and returning back to South Bend to do that, South Bend, Indiana. And, um, and so it's been about learning and growing, but also taking what we know, which is our musician skills, and continuing to apply them to making new albums. And uh, so driving and doing all of that, and also writing new records and trying to inspire people through the music, because that's you know, that's basically where we had, where it all began and where it always continues. There was one time when, so we're, we're finishing the film and Nathaniel's literally like, I, you know, he's producing, recording. He's like, hold on, I need to get this one noise in like a bathroom. I'm going to record this real quick or in this closet here. And then he's like editing. We had to like catch a flight. He's like editing like the film and editing the score on like a plane, on a train, in an automobile. And it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this yes. is crazy. But you know, we just did whatever it took, and, and over the last, oh my gosh, you know, we were based in Brooklyn, New York, and then we would rent our place out to continue doing this, and so for years we've pretty much been homeless and nomadic, just putting it all on the line for this film, because we believe in this message so much, and it was one of those things where, as someone growing up in Indiana, I never imagined that I would be a multifaceted artist. You know, just to be an artist from Indiana is something I'm so proud of, something we fought so hard for, and, and the people have lifted us up. I mean, our fan base in Indiana, we are so grateful for them. They are so positive, so hyped up, and just love them so much. So, honestly, I'm the artist I am today because of our Hoosier fans and because of the people who have lifted us up and supported us from, from this beautiful state that we call home. Yeah, and we've, uh, you know, there's a lot of times in art and in music where you feel like you're done with a project, but the project's not done with you. <laughs> and so I think that this project is a reflection of a lot of our fans here who wanted to continue to support it, a lot of them being Hoosiers as well. And, um, and, and, and coming from here, there was a lot to learn. I mean, you know, we didn't really have family members in the business. We didn't, you know, I grew up working on a farm mm -hmm. and then we went from working on a farm to performing on a farm. <laughs> it was a big upgrade. So, you know, it was like having that transition happen, there was a lot to learn along the way. And so we took our time and, uh, you know, relied on a lot of times the generosity of others and the support of others. And we knew that this project wasn't done with us. And ultimately, I think it was because it was on this journey to come here to Indianapolis at the Heartland there International Film Festival, we really feel like it is this 360 where we're coming back to the place where it all began and where the film ended at the Morris Performing Arts Center 
uh, up in South Bend. It was the last of the 50 states and where we did our culmination uh, event for the, for the, for the uh, film. And so we're bringing it back to this film festival and it really feels like we're just seeing a lot of familiar faces and people that have supported us along the way and also being able to give them an experience at New Fields that I think is going to be a once in a lifetime experience to see a film that took six and a half years to create by two, you know, Hoosiers uh, who stumbled, Hippie Hoosiers. stumbled, <laughs> who stumbled <laughs> many times along the way, but have presented something that I, I feel very proud to have it at this particular venue in this particular city in this particular state and it does very much feel like where it needs to be what's next Ooh. okay well we're going to be touring on our brand new album far out which we're so excited about we also have many ideas i mean once you once you become a filmmaker then you're always like oh what if we could film this or how could we shoot this so we have many ideas for more projects coming down the line but we're just excited to get State of the Unity, our documentary, out to the people. So we're going to be taking it to distribution next and getting it to the people. I mean, this film was made by the people for the people. That's something we're very proud about. We didn't have big corporate sponsors. It was literally bootstrapped and it was raised up by uh, Americans and people from overseas as well. So we're just very proud of it. And to get it to get it out there is what we're excited. We're going to be focusing all of our energy on over the next three months. The beauty of making uh, this film is that we've learned what it takes to do something of this magnitude. So we are very careful about what we're thinking about <laughs> because we know that it's like we had like a naiveness about us, you know, the coming from time. where we did and, and just putting something on to say, hey, we're going to make this film. Now we have to be a little bit more thoughtful because, you know, as you ascend life and everything, you realize that projects take a lot of commitment. So we have some ideas of what might be the next film or the next documentary or the next record. And we're slowly moving towards that and seeing if it would be something that we could, uh, that we could pull off, you know, continuing to do what we're doing and, and just growing in the music industry every day and trying to document so that other people can be inspired and they can believe that, hey, I, I, I live in Indiana. I can do that as well. You know, it's possible to do these things now. The world's changing and um, we want to inspire other Hoosiers to go out and pursue their dreams. we only have two choices, us or them. There's clearly this current social crisis in our society, economic, political, social, is dividing people and people are getting hurt. It's extremely dangerous, in many ways growing more dangerous. We've been taught that we're much more divided than we are united. I've always believed that what brings us together is stronger than what divides us. This is what democracy looks like! This is what democracy looks like! Well, America has always been a very raucous country. I mean, we're an immigrant nation, so we've always been a cauldron. Th that is America. Art itself is one of the greatest unifiers on our planet. We thought about the act of people signing their message of unity next to each other. One after the next, thousands of people signing this message on the station wagon. By having people sign their names next to each other, it is an act of unity to stand next to someone of a different political party, of a different race, of a different religion. This was just two musicians with a car, a guitar, and their voices, believing that there was something better out in the world and that we could somehow pull that out by showing the ultimate vulnerability of going in a car and asking people to sign it and going from state to state with no grand plan other than to bring people together in a very divided year. Thing you've ever seen. It's awesome.